Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zoe. Some of you may know me from ZA Reptiles. And today's video is gonna be a fun one. I'm gonna introduce you guys to all four of my snakes, give you a little information on them, and some fun facts about each species. So first up is my three and a half year old Amel or albino corn snake phoenix. They are albino because they lack melanin and this leads them to being bright orangish, yellow, whites, reds, and having these reddish eyes. So these guys can be found in the southeastern United States. They're common in many, many states. So these guys can be found in the southeastern United States in many different states. And they're a part of the family Colubridae. And this is one of the biggest snake families. So as you may have guessed, these snakes in the wild are very helpful to farmers because they control the rodent population on the farms. You guys may have already known that if you had watched my corn snake care guide, I did talk a bit about that. Now in the wild, these guys are not threatened, they're not endangered. However, there are some things that do threaten their survival. And this, like most species, is habitat loss. The other thing is a lot of wild corn snakes are being accidentally hunted and killed because they're being mistaken for copperheads. Aside from those two things, these snakes are doing pretty well in the wild despite being very popular in the pet trade. So yeah, that is Phoenix. Now Phoenix is in shield right now, so she does look a little duller than usual, but she's still beautiful. So next up is my sand boa tootsie. She's just a normal sand boa, no special morph, but I think the normal ones are the prettiest. I mean, just look at that bright orange coloring. They remind me of Halloween, which is why she got her name Tootsie, named after Tootsie Roll. And her introduction video was during my Halloween series. So sand boas are one of the smallest of the boa species and they're native to East Africa. So this is Egypt down to Tanzania, which includes, as you may have guessed, Kenya. Hence their name, the Kenyan sand boa. So they spend most of their time buried. They are a burrowing species. So if you look real close at a sand boa, you'll notice their eyes and their nose are kind of placed weirdly on top of their head compared to other snakes. And this is because they spend all of their time buried and it kind of helps them breathe and search the surface while the rest of their body remains hidden underneath the ground. Sambos are also an ambush snake, which means they will sit and wait for prey to come by and ambush it and attack it. They've even been known to drag it back under the ground with them as a way to suffocate it. As opposed to constricting it, they drag it under the ground. So next up is my banana ball python Snicket. I've had Snicket for a couple of months now. He was an early Christmas present to myself because I love banana ball pythons. So ball pythons are native to West Africa and they're also the smallest of the African pythons. So another name for the ball python is the royal python. Because way back in the day when they were brought over to Europe, a lot of the royals wore them as necklaces and as fashion statements because they are just so docile. They didn't have to worry about the snake attacking anybody. They just wore them around their neck all day and they were quite the fashion statement. Getting him off of my neck is going to be difficult.
All right, my next and final snake is Tinsel. This is my Sunbeam snake. She was what I'll call as most are. So there are two species of Sunbeam snakes and they're native to Southeast Asia and Southern China. So all of these snakes that you're finding at expos, they're typically taken straight from those locations and wild caught because people aren't really having the best luck captive breeding, I guess. So sunbeam snakes are fossorial snakes or burrowing snakes, similar to the Kenyan sand boas. They spend most of their time underground and they have a shovel head just like the sand boas do to help maneuver underground. So these sunbeam snakes are a little special, a little unique, not only because they're one of the most iridescent snakes, but because the front of their upper jaw has teeth where most snakes don't have teeth there. And not only do they have teeth in weird locations compared to other snakes, but their teeth are hinged as opposed to being firmly secured in the jaw. So their teeth can move around a little bit without falling out where most snakes have their teeth firmly secured so they're not moving around. Now another reason that the sunbeams make horrible pets is because their defense mechanism is to musk. They're not really biters. They don't do all this attacking, like going for ya. They musk, so they release a horrible odor. At least I've heard it's horrible. But I'm lucky because tinsel is very calm and very good for a sunbeam snake. She does very well with handling. She was a rescue and then rehomed to me and she was used for educational purposes because she is so good with being handled. However, I only handle her maybe once a week when I'm checking in on her. Also called the iridescent earth snakes. And when they're little, the babies actually have a white collar or white patch whoop, that goes around their neck and it goes away as they get older. So you'll see Tinsel doesn't have that anymore. We believe Tinsel is about two or three years old, but she is fully grown, full adult size, full adult age. So there are a couple of reasons why sunbeams are so iridescent. One being that their scales sit so close to their body and this helps them maneuver through the dirt easier. And all those people that say snakes are slippery and slimy, this would be the snake they're talking about. Because the scales sit so close to the body, they feel so smooth. It's really quite cool. But if you're trying to pick one up and they're like zooming around the tub very quickly, like trying to get away from you, it it's really hard to grab them because they just slip right through your hands. Yes, it's pretty gross. And then the scientific reason behind why they're so iridescent is because of nanostructures that are in their scales. These nanostructures are called iridophores and that is what makes them so iridescent. I may make another video on this going more into detail on the science of it, but that's your basic fact of why they're so iridescent. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed meeting all of my snakes and learning some fun facts about them. If you'd like to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. And don't forget to like this video because I mean, I just showed you a bunch of cute and adorable little snakes. So why not like it? So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.